Hi, welcome to Biostock. Abliva is developing drugs for the treatment of mitochondrial diseases, and the company posted positive interim phase 2 data with its lead candidate KL1333 this summer. I'm joined in the studio by Abliva CEO, Ellen Donnelly, to learn more about the positive results. Welcome, Ellen. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so first of all, could you tell us more about the Falcon study? Uh, what are you evaluating exactly? Sure, great question. So the Falcon study enrolls patients with primary mitochondrial diseases. Um, these are adult patients that have um, the disease due to a mutation in their mitochondrial DNA. They also have to have fatigue and myopathy, which are two components that we look at in the study. Mm. Patients with primary mitochondrial disease are very sick. It's a devastating disorder. The mitochondria are in every cell in your body. And so you can imagine if something in your body is disrupted and it's in every cell, mm. except your red blood cells, it can lead to a pretty devastating disease. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to test this in these patients. It's adults with the primary mitochondrial disease. Yeah. Um, so, well, could you uh, run us through the, the results real quick and uh, why, they're, why these results are important. Yeah, we were thrilled to get yeah. the interim analysis. Um, we were the first um, company actually in this space to get through a positive mm -hmm. interim analysis, so that makes it even more exciting because mm -hmm. we're really on the path to taking this drug into the patients. Um, the analysis was important for a number of reasons. When we came into the study, we only had a phase 1B, mm -hmm. um, which had eight patients in it that were dosed with the drug for 10 days. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine going from that small pilot study into a major pivotal study. So mm -hmm. this is the study we need to go for registration if it's positive. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big jump. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do a number of things at the interim analysis to test our hypotheses, test our assumptions, and make sure that the drug was safe. Mm -hmm. um, and so we analyzed the drug after 24 weeks of dosing, mm -hmm. our first wave of patients. We closed the database and we looked at the data. And the first thing you look at is safety. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure we only dosed patients for 10 days before, and now I'm dosing them for 48 weeks. You want to make sure it's safe for the patients. And so that is a very comprehensive analysis that we do on the safety database. Um, the second thing they looked at is whether the endpoints might be successful in the full study. And so the reason we do that is it's obviously good financial decision making because if the study hadn't been successful at that point, we call it futility. If we hadn't passed futility, the study would have ended. Mm -hmm. um, patients would have been able to go back to their normal lives. Patients are giving up a lot to be in our study. Mm -hmm. It's 48 weeks. You know, you have to do these assessments weekly. Um, you have to go into the clinic five times. And so it's a lot on a patient that's very sick. And so we wanted to make sure we were cognizant of that as well. Um, so the fact that it passed the two endpoints um, was really quite successful. You know, it's exciting to know that we're moving forward on that on that area. And then the third thing that happened in the uh, the interim analysis is we did a sample size readjustment. So many people ask what that means. So what happens when you start a study is you make assumptions on the power and the ability of the endpoints to be successful. Yeah. And in this case, as in most rare diseases, you make those assumptions based on comparable studies. Mm. You don't have enough data to actually make it based on your studies, so you make it on comparable studies. And so this was a great chance to look at that, look at those early assumptions, and see if the study needed to be a bit bigger. And so in this case, we decided to enroll 180 total patients. Okay. Um, and so we're excited to get started. So you mentioned two endpoints here, uh, fatigue and myopathy, correct? Yeah. Um, why is it important to have these two endpoints specifically? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question, and it's super uncommon, so I'm mm -hmm. glad you asked it. So when we did patient research, at the very beginning of the study, we spent a lot of time talking to patients, and we continue to do that throughout the duration because mm -hmm. you want to make sure you're developing a drug that's relevant to this patient population. Um, so in those discussions, they kept saying fatigue, mm -hmm. fatigue, fatigue. You know, I just... I just, I just want to be able to leave the house. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go to the grocery store. I want to be able to hold a job. Um, and these patients are seriously ill. Mm -hmm. They might be having seizures, strokes, mm -hmm. death. Um, but the thing that really matters to them is this under overwhelming fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, they say it's like being waking up with a 10% battery and you have to figure out how you're going to get through the day. Yeah with that 10% battery. Um, so we did a lot of work on fatigue, went to the regulators, talked to them about using a, a patient reported outcome for fatigue. They liked the idea, went to payers, made sure that they were okay with it. And then we actually validated our own um, fatigue endpoint. So this endpoint, we tested it with patients with PMD mm -hmm. so that we would understand their disease better and be able to design an endpoint that actually was relevant to them mm -hmm. with their disease. Um, so really proud of that work. That's our first 
uh, primary endpoint. Mm -hmm. Our second primary endpoint is a myopathy endpoint, and myopathy mm -hmm. is muscle weakness. Yeah. We're looking at the myopathy in the proximal or core regions, and what the patients have to do is they have to sit down and stand up mm -hmm. as many times as they can in 30 seconds. Okay. Super easy to do at home. Sure. Uh, you just need a nice chair. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing about that is it's quantitative. So. Yeah. We clearly can count the number of times we can stand up and sit down. Yeah. Um, and you can do it probably 24, 26 times in mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Our patients can do it maybe 8 or 10. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. it's a significant issue. You can imagine if you're trying mm -hmm. to go to the bathroom, get out of the car, sit down at the din dinner table. This is very hard for you to accomplish. Yeah. So we thought both of those things were really important. Um, and we thought that they were equally important. Um, and so we went to the FDA and we said, we'd like to test these both, mm -hmm. but they're independent. Okay. Um, and so we're testing them as an independent alternative endpoint. Okay. And an alternative endpoint is very different than a co-primary. In a co-primary, the two endpoints have to move together. Yep. With alternate endpoints, they're independently analyzed. So we say that we have two shots on goal. Yeah. That means that if either is successful, we can, we can file this for registration. Right. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to have both endpoints uh yeah, be positive, let's say, in this in this Exactly, scenario. exactly. Um, so I'm curious about uh, the, the competitive landscape here. How do, how, how do these results compare to what else is out there for, for these patients? Yeah, it's a great question. Unfortunately, the competitive landscape is a bit thin, mm -hmm. um, and you always, that's hard for the patients because mm -hmm. they're really relying on you to deliver your medicine. The nice thing is that we're first to the market. Yeah. Um, so we are the leading program in this area now, mm -hmm. um, which puts a good deal of responsibility on our shoulders. <laughs> yeah. um, but it often also offers us a great opportunity mm -hmm. um, to be first to market mm -hmm. and to have um, an, an enormous commercial opportunity. Yeah. So when we talk about rare diseases, one of the important things about those is that um, you premium can premium price the drug, mm -hmm. and so we think the opportunity in this area is is well over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes it a very attractive space to play in, yeah, yeah. Um, because you do have the the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, well, uh, along those lines, as you approach, you know, if you go uh, as you go towards the market, have, have you seen more interest from from potential partners, investors, now that these interim yeah, uh, results have come out? Yeah. Every time you have an important milestone like this, I think you see additional interest. Yeah. Um, this one was important because it kind of tested the assumptions, it tested the protocol, yeah. it tested the design. I think when we entered the study, many people were worried about the safety. Yeah. You know, will this drug stand up over 48 weeks? We know yes. Um, another concern was obviously the efficacy. We've got new, a new endpoint that we've developed as well as the quantitative endpoint. It's not often that you see two primary endpoints, so to pass futility on both of them was hugely important. Um, we showed that you can find the patients, yeah. so it's a rare disease, and often people are worried about, oh, well, you know, you've, you've selected a really homogeneous population here yeah. intentionally. Yeah. Are you actually going to be able to find them? And yeah. we found them. Yeah. So really, we couldn't be happier with the outcome and, and being first. There are other people in the space, um, so we have... We're all really good friends and hoping that everyone does well. Stealth um, is another company kind of at the same point that we are. They're looking at a different population of patients. Okay. So they're looking at the patients that have nuclear DNA mutations. Mm -hmm. We look at the patients that have mitochondrial DNA mutations. Yeah. So the, the drugs wouldn't be competitive, but they've just finished uh, enrollment in their study. Yeah. And then there are a couple earlier companies that we're really excited about, Tecento, Chondrion, both developing neat programs a little bit behind us. Yeah. Um, and so that's... And then there's a, a German company called Omicos. Um, but those are really the clinical programs right now that exist. So it's a pretty small landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, you know, I think we all work together. We try to make, have learnings from each other. We had a, an unsuccessful study in this space, and I can't tell you how helpful they've been to everyone. Yeah. I mean, I think we all work on this together, and we're all prepping the market and getting the patients ready so that when one of us has a drug, you know, yeah. it'll be successful. So really can't say enough about the community and primary yeah. mitochondrial diseases. It's a really great group of people. It's not something you hear very often, you know, about, you know, community of, uh, of companies coming together and, you know, trying to solve a problem together, in, in, like in this situation. So It's neat because it's, it's often about the advocacy groups, too. Yeah. And in this area, they're very strong and united. Mm -hmm. um, so in the U.S., there's a large advocacy group called UMDF, and they really they bring us all together mm -hmm. once a year. And we have the chance to meet with each other, present to each other, meet the patients, meet the physicians in the area. And so it really is a community effort. I mean, I think we've all helped each other along the way and mm -hmm. will continue to do so.
Great. Um, well, I want to touch upon the uh, finances. Um, so um, you you announced that uh, the results triggered a convertible loan uh, conversion. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Again, a unique situation. Yeah. So we did a, f a financing round at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. that included a rice issue as well as a convertible loan. Mm -hmm. uh, and that convertible loan was only triggered off of a successful study. So mm -hmm. we thought it was a novel way to get additional financing. We needed the 80 million sec. Yeah. Um, but do it in a tiered fashion so that a little bit less of the money was at risk. Mm -hmm. And so that was the reason for the two the two, um, two parts of the financing round. So that did convert at mm -hmm. the positive interim analysis. So thank you to my shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just provides us with additional runway mm -hmm. as we continue to talk to potential investors, potential partners about this the the final phase of the study. Yeah. Um, so so it was a successful financing, and we're excited to have a little bit of time because you don't want to read out data and then say, yeah. okay, you know, we're desperate. Let's let's go get something done. Sure. Well, speaking of the final phase of the study, just to just to end with this, um, what comes next for the Falcon study? Oh, we're so <laughs> excited. I mean, the final phase of the study. Uh, <laughs> that's important. So we will recruit um, a total of 180 patients yeah. into the study. We're looking at expanding it. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to make sure that you're in multiple geographies. So mm -hmm. we were already in the U.S. and Europe. We'll continue to expand our sites in the U.S. and then expand throughout Europe a mm -hmm. little bit more. Um, so that's exciting. Getting more countries involved in the study will be important. At the same time, we're doing a lot of things in parallel. So you mm -hmm. do non-clinical studies. Um, we have to build a confirmatory evidence package, and we obviously have to manufacture a drug because yeah. when you go and you take it for NDA submission, you need to have the commercial lots available. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an exciting time. There are a lot of things going on, and mm -hmm. we're really look looking forward to it. It's kind of this was our last de-risking moment, mm -hmm. and now it's just take it to the finish line. So it's an exciting time. Well, thanks so much, Ellen, for uh, taking the time to stop by here and uh, giving us your uh, your thoughts on the data. And uh, we wish you all the best with this study. Uh, it's it's good to see that things are going along pretty well here. Absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mike. Thanks for thanks for the time. Mm -hmm.